Hello, I'm Brian Potts, a Master of Divinity student. When we walk up to a light switch and turn it on, the light bulb comes on. We expect this, and we have reason to expect it. It's happened numerous times. There are some times when the light doesn't come on, though. We check the light bulb, we check the fuse box. We have steps and processes to figure out why the light did not come on. Sometimes, like in August of 2003, when southwestern Ontario was plunged into a blackout for several days, our analytical approach for why the light didn't come on didn't work. During that time, I would walk up to the light switch several times a day and turn the switch on hoping the light would come on, and it never did. We started to lose faith that the light would come back on again. Reflecting on that thought, I turned to Hebrews 11, verse 1, which says very simply that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Several people have used the analogy of a light switch or electricity to explain faith, to explain that passage. We can't see electricity, but when we turn on the light switch, we sure know it's there because the light comes on. And thinking about that, I realize that that's, analogy leaves gaps. It, it leaves holes in what faith really could, should be. But yet, the other side is it holds weight for a lot of us today. There are times when we pray and we don't feel that anyone's listening. There are times we question whether God hears what we have to say. The entire letter of Hebrews is written to a people that had those same struggles and those same challenges. They were questioning their new Christian faith. That's why the letter was written. It was meant to reassure them that people like Abraham and Sarah held on to their faith, even when there was cause to maybe doubt and question. I mean, the Lord told Abraham to pick up his family and move, and go to a strange land. For the rest of his life, he lived like a stranger in a foreign country, living in tents. God promised Abraham and Sarah they would have descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the beach. And yet it wasn't until Sarah was 90 years old before she received the power to conceive. That's why these people were examples of faith called upon because they held on to their faith and their belief in God, even at times where there was probably good reason to question. Today we question pretty much everything. We're critical thinkers, we're logical, we're intelligent people. And in many ways, that's, those are great traits, those are good things to hold on to. But where does that leave us in a world where we have microwave instructions on the Pop-Tart container, where we no longer have the patience to wait for our Pop-Tart to pop up in the toaster? We, we're stuck in this world where we lack the patience and, and time to, to appreciate and, and have faith in God. And that's a shame. The very first time I did a sermon here at Trillium. My point of the whole sermon was that we need to slow down, to take a minute, to listen to the still quiet voice of Christ in our hearts, and then step forward with confidence. I still feel today as I felt then when I did that first sermon. That's the point. You know, a God abides in us and with us. He is listening. Our prayers are heard. And we need to be certain of that, be certain of what we hope for. 
be sure of what we don't see. It's, it's there. We need to find a place to have faith even when the lights go out.